I want to start this video by saying I miss my wife. Like, she tell me she misses me every day when I come home from work. And it's just like, well, baby, I was only gone for eight hours. She's like, so I don't care. I miss you. And I don't necessarily tease her about it. But it's just like, come on. I wasn't really gone long enough for you to miss me. But today, for some reason, when I walked out of the front door, I just missed my wife. You know, we had what I thought was a real nice evening last night. We, we, we cuddled and we laughed and we talked like we normally did, but at the same time still handling adult shit. And I got up this morning. She was actually supposed to leave early with her sister. So when I woke up at like 12.30 this afternoon and she was still in the bed, I was like, whoa, she missed her thing. So I woke her up and said, hey, babe, you, you missed your thing? She's like, no, it's fine, it's fine. I was like, all right, you know, but I just miss her. You know, I, I can't nail it down to one particular thing that happened last night. It wasn't because I held her more than normal. It wasn't because I woke up this morning and, you know, I had a little extra time before I headed off to work. I just miss my wife. I just, you know, we don't even have to be doing nothing. I just, I like to be in her presence. And I think that's the evolution of our marriage was there was a time when we weren't as well put together as we are, I guess that's the way you would say it. We weren't like this cohesive unit. We were still kind of learning our way. Sometimes she would fuss and, and argue with me, and I would just go, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Whatever you want, dear. Okay, like, here's an example of things that are just different. Uh, I am the type of person, when I have a cold... Uh, first, I only get sick like once a year, maybe twice. But when I do, I'm sick as a dog. I'm a mess. But if I have to sneeze, I use tissue. I blow my nose in the tissue. I throw it away. You know, done deal. Uh, sometimes, if I have to, like, cough and if, like, phlegm comes up, I'll just keep a little trash can by the bed with a plastic bag in it, and I'm, rah, rah, and I'm just spitting the bag. It's sick, and it's a little disgusting, but, you know, I've got a cold or the flu or whatever. It's like, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Asia, on the other hand, was raised in a home where if you blow your nose in tissue, you then take more tissue, and you wrap it around that one, and then you throw it away. To make sure that I guess it's like nobody touches the snot, I I don't I don't know, but I remember the first time I saw her do that, I was like, "Fuck are you doing? You're wasting tissue." It's like she would like cough stuff up and then she would like spit it into tissue, and then she would wrap more tissue around. That's like, what are you doing? That's not what tissue is for. Like, sure, you gotta blow your nose, blow your nose. That, that's absolutely fine, but you're using three, four times the amount that you need to be using just to blow your nose and it's just oh we used to get into it about that so hard it's just you know she was in a house full of women they were a little you know they were dainty and prissy and, you know everything is you know like her little sister the germaphobe like of course they wrap their their tissue in more tissue but who the hell has tissue for that you know but that's just little things and that was years ago we're long since past little things like that like, she don't like that I fart in the bed, you know? But it's the sort of thing you can't argue with me about it, rather out than in. Like, what you want me to do? Hold on to it and have my guts all night? Like, no, I got, you know, I'm done, you know? Sure, it stinks for four seconds, and then it passes, and then you just shut up about it and go to bed. Like, we used to argue about those sorts of things, and now we're just, we're much better at it than we used to be, you know? Uh, it's funny because we talk about this every once in a while, how we would, uh, before we were married, before we were living together, we would talk on the phone, like, all the time. Like, when I say all the time, I mean, like, we were on the phone 18 hours a day. Like, if there weren't unlimited plans, our bills would have been thousands of dollars every single month. It was ridiculous. Like, hey, do anybody else remember, you know, uh, it was... Free nights and weekends started after 9 o'clock. Well, this was a little past that. So we could, we would just sit on the phone for 18 hours out of the day. And at night, you know, I would put her on speakerphone and I would lay my phone on the pillow next to my pillow. And I would blow her a kiss and I would say goodnight. Like, 
but I can't tell you what we talked about. Like, what the hell did we talk about 18 hours a day, seven days a week? Like, how unproductive were we that that was all we did? It's like, and there were times when I had to go out and do something, and I would grab the earpiece, and I would put it in my ear, and put my phone in my pocket, and say, all right, babe, you come with me, you know, and we would talk along the way, and then when I would get there, and, you know, she would hear me conducting business, and she would steadily be trying to, like, yammer, and actually, she would talk dirty to me. Uh, I was kind of hesitant to say that for whatever reason, but to mess with me while I was conducting business, she'd be like, yeah, I got on them red panties that you like taking them off and I'd be sitting there squirming the like, trouble. <laughs> you know, it, it was they were good times. They were good times. But today I just miss my wife. You know? I just got here. You know, I haven't been at work very long. The only other stop I made was McDonald's to grab a soda because it's hot out. But I do. I miss my wife. I think today I'm gonna spend a little bit of time writing. But I'm going to spend more time just, you know, if she's got a little bit of time on her hands, just sitting around and talking to her. Like, I just miss her. It's like my best friend in the whole world. Like, why wouldn't I miss her? Like, why wouldn't I want to talk to her? It's my baby. You know? Not that I want to make this a long, drawn-out thing, but I was talking to a friend of mine today. Hi, Vanessa. That's my little sister. I love her so much. I do. And we were discussing, like, marriage, or or pretty much just being an adult, really. Like, let's leave marriage out of it. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, oh, stop the presses. Is somebody on the train in the summer without a shirt on? Whoo, man, let's call the National Guard. Anyway, uh, we were talking about being an adult. And how you need to stop blaming other people for your misfortunes and just get it done. Even if you were set up, even if you were the victim of a conspiracy, you know, something had to happen for them to execute it. You have to accept your part in everything that happens and just move forward. Even if there was no grand conspiracy, the fact is you have to deal with what is. And now it's time to get your shit together and move on and try to do other things. Like, I don't talk about it very often, but the job that I had before this, not not BF, like a real job, uh, when I worked downtown, I played a part in me being fired. Like, I understand what my role is in that. Like, was I the victim of a, a, pub a publicity stunt? Yes. Was it a public relations move? Did they let me go? Yes. But it was still my fault. Like, okay, here's the story to recap. Uh, Kari, Asia, and I were on a train along with uh, Kari's friend, Zach. Yeah, you remember Zach, right? And Kari decided that it would be okay for him to buy a, a, uh, a student ticket instead of a regular ticket, despite the fact that he was a grown man. Now, at the time, my job provided me with a monthly pass for the train, so it wasn't really a big deal for me. Asia bought a ticket. It was fine. Uh, I don't know if Zach bought a ticket, but whatever. So we're on the train, and we're just kicking it. And uh, Officer A. Johnson gets on board the train, and he's just asking for tickets or passes because that's his job. And when he asked for Kari for his ticket, he showed it to him. I don't know if it was expired or if he just asked for whatever his student ID was or whatever the case was. He was in the right to ask Kari. And Kari lied to him. And as a family, we joked about it because it was funny. It really was. It was legitimately funny. But Kari, what he didn't understand was when you lie to the cops about your name, they assume you're some sort of felon, because why would you lie? So he had to treat Kari as hostile. So Kari at the time did not have ID of any kind. And had someone not stepped in, they probably would have taken him down. He would have spent a night in jail while they tried to figure it out. So as his father, I stepped up and said, hey, look, I'm his dad. Here's my ID. You know, hey, sorry about that. You know, he didn't have the right ticket. We'll get off here. Don't worry about it. It's all good. And he ran Kari's name, couldn't find anything because Kari hadn't done anything. 
And that was the end of it. So the next day I'm at work and I'm minding my business. I, I remember I was beat six because I was over by the convention center. Fun times. And I got a call from the office. They were like, hey, can you come into the office? I said, sure. So I head down there and A. Johnson's there. And he pulls me into an office and he's like, yeah, you know what you did yesterday was rude and disrespectful. I was like, you know what? You know, in hindsight, like, because now I'm in my professional attire. You know, I'm at work. I'm, I'm doing a job. I'm not just, you know, hanging out with my family. So I see things a little differently in my professional setting. I was like, you know, we probably didn't have that the right way. You know, on behalf of my family, I apologize. You know, we probably could have dealt with that better. And he says, well, you have a warrant for your arrest for some shit you did, I was 2013 or 2014, so I'm going to need you to come down and set a court date, I was like, yeah, hey, no problem, sure, I get off at 6, you know, I'll run down, he's like, no, you have to do it now, I was like, but I'm at work, he's like, look, you have to do it now, so, all right, whatever, so I go to my bosses, who were both there, and I was like, hey, I just got to run down here, set a court date, I'll be right back, you know, if you want to consider this my lunch, you know, that's fine. And I get down there, and apparently the warrant was big enough for them to say, nope, we're going to hold you. So I end up being held there for a maximum, I was there for about 12 hours. And when I got out, uh, I, I got out at like 12.30 at night. And I, I went home and immediately went to sleep, and I got up, and I went to work the next morning because that's my job. You know, they pulled me to the side and they're like, you know, thanks for showing up. We don't know what we're going to do just yet. So they sent me home with pay, which was nice. Here I go. Turn off my truck again because the, the air is really weird in this truck. So. So it's like, we'll send you home with pay because you did show up. Thanks for that. And we'll let you know. It's like, OK, fine. No problem. So the next day. I show up again for work. I'm dressed like, hey, let's go. Because even if they say no, you know, I want to be prepared. If they say, yeah, you can work, and then I'm not in uniform, what does that say? So I come to work in uniform again the next day, and they're like, no, nah, we're going to have to let you go. And they, uh, they cashed me out for all my vacation time and my sick time. But again, the moral of this story was, while it was messed up, while I didn't need to be escorted out in handcuffs, while they didn't have to make a big scene at my job, while that officer could have done things a different way, I understand what my part was in all of that. I had done some things that I had no business doing. And full disclosure, uh, the, the warrant was for, uh, there was a time when we weren't working and I was broke, we had no money, and I went to the store and I stole hot dogs and some bread. Like, we were hungry. And I was doing what I had to do to feed my family. Is it right? No. Was it moral? Uh, I guess, to, you know, do what I got to do to feed my family. I, I'd do it again if I absolutely had to. So, I stand by what I did. But I also understand the consequences of that. So... That's what being an adult is, is accepting the consequences of your own actions and moving forward. So that's what I did. I moved forward. And as you can see, it took me a while, but I bounced back quite well. Like, here we are. Like, I'm at work right now. Like, I'm on the clock. I'm on duty. And I'm sitting here talking to you. Like, how hard can my job be? Well, my biggest concern right now is I'm just trying to make sure that the truck stays cool. You know, because I'm hot. Like, really? This is my job now. This is what I do for a living. And even though it's it's coming to an end painfully soon, I'm so looking forward to being laid off. Oh, my God. According to sources, there are no permanent assignments available for anyone. And the only thing that they do have are special events. So, like, oh, excuse me. If there's a concert downtown and they need an extra set of hands, they could call you and you could come down and you could do it. But, you know, that's like, so? That's, that's not really consistent work. So they're going to have to lay us off. So I'm, oh my God, I'm looking forward to it so much. Uh, unofficially, our last day is June 30th. So that means that uh, that's a Friday. So I'll be off that Saturday, 
which I want to say is June half, 30 days or 31, I don't, whatever Saturday is. It'll be my first, my first Saturday off in a while. We're celebrating because I don't know what's going to happen beyond that weekend because, like, come Monday morning, I'm going to have to get up, get dressed, hit the unemployment office and do what I got to do. Or maybe between now and then I'll be privy to more information. But right now, as it stands, is that I'm just going to go down to the unemployment office. I'm going to file for unemployment. They're going to give it to me, and I'm going to sit my ass on my ass for a couple of months, and then I'll work on something again later. And again, it's through no fault of my own. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. This contract just happened to run out. My company happened to run out of work for us. It's a legitimate thing. It's like, it's no big deal. So I'll do my best to uh, I'll celebrate, I'll recharge, and then... I'll hit the ground running, and it's security. I've got mobile security. I've been a, a mobile guard now for, for months. Like, this looks great on my resume. Like, I'll find work. Like, when I took this job, I ended up, I had to turn down a couple of jobs, including one at Dee Dee's, it's loss prevention, which was right up the street from my house. I had to turn that down so I could do this. So I have no concerns with being able to find work and keep work. It's just this contract ran out. What do you want to do? So, hey, I feel like I've babbled at you long enough. Uh, I'm going to go call my wife because I miss her.